What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I have created my top 10 favorite heels of all time. This is my personal favorite heel list. So, if there's some people on here that you don't see, please don't take it personally. This is just people that I either grew up watching and just despised, or even now, like I, I buy into their character and I despise what they're doing, even though I recognize it's it's all for entertainment. It's still some dastardly evil stuff. They made this list, man. So let's get into it. But before we get into my list, I'm gonna ha I have honorable mentions. So on my honorable mention side of thing, because I wasn't able to put everybody on there, um, JBL, Sasha Banks, Adam Cole, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, and Roman Reigns. Those are my honorable mentions. A lot of these, or all those individuals, you know, they definitely deserve to be probably on somebody else's top 10 list. But for me personally, I had to really sit down and think, how evil were these people? And not to say that those individuals on the honorable mentions didn't have their evil moments. It's just these, the, the ones that have made the top 10 cut, they definitely, I, I was feeling some type of way. So, all right, so let's get into this one for number 10. We're starting off with Seth freaking Rollins as they like to call him I just like to keep it Seth Rollins Seth Rollins deserves to be on my top 10 for the simple fact that when he turned on the shield and nobody saw it coming it was just it was a great momentous occasion when he hit them with the steel chair and he just he was one of those I guess you could say chicken shit heels that you just wanted people to just get their hands on but they couldn't and at the same time, he can go in the ring. The dude is fantastic in the ring. And it's just, when he's a heel, that's when he's at his prime. When, If you guys remember when he was sending, uh, I think he, he curb stomped uh, Dean Ambrose into oblivion. I thought that was a, a beautiful, beautiful setup. Hell, he curb stomped um randy orton busted him open if you guys remember that segment it was fantastic bro he and he could back it up in the ring that's the thing he could go in the ring but he knew how to get under your skin and i just wanted to see him get his his face punched in so obviously that's some good heel work so seth rollins is number 10 on my list number nine cm punk man it's, it's crazy we're talking about cm punk because they're potentially trying to uh maybe turn him heel in aew right now but cm punk as a heel is great they I, honestly he's much in my opinion he's he's more naturally an asshole so he he comes off as pretentious like i'm better than you and it worked so well um him when he took over the nexus uh him with the straight edge society i love the feud he had with ray mysterio fantastic stuff bro he he just knows how to get under a person's skin especially the feud he had with uh with jeff hardy and and him dealing jeff hardy dealing with substance abuse and all this other stuff it, it just he knows what words to say to get under your skin and you, you just want to see him get his ass beat too you know what i'm saying and he he's very good at it so i i, I have to put uh cm punk is number nine on my list number eight this is probably gonna surprise a lot of you guys mjf mjf made the top 10 from just a few stuff the stuff i've seen from him for the past few years there's no doubt about it he is the next big thing in this business bro in wrestling as a whole he is arguably if not one of the best heels ever he's already in that conversation he's one of the best heels to ever do it especially in this modern day now you could say well that's a lot to just be putting on someone you know that's relatively new to the mainstream masses but anytime there was a promo segment with mjf when his music hit, everyone boos. Everyone. He's not one of those heels that gets a lot of cheers, per se. And if he does, he knows how to get the boos back. He knows how to turn it back up. When people start cheering him, he knows how to get back on the crowd. The only time he really gets cheered is when he's at home. But outside of that, everywhere he goes, when his music hits, instant boos people are locked in people want to hear what he has to say people want to see him get his ass kicked people want to see him get beat up oh my gosh bro the, 
the back and forth with CM Punk, the Wardlow situation, how they they teased that, and you wanted to see Wardlow get his hands on him. It was great. He does some of the greatest work inside that ring. He's very he, he's very good in the ring. He doesn't do too many crazy stuff, but he doesn't need to do that. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have to do the crazy flips or anything like that. He he has the wrestling psychology down. And he's one of those people that even in public, he's still going to be an asshole. He keeps the kayfabe going. He's still a piece of crap, even in public. That's why he has to be on my top uh, 10 list. Because uh, ever since I got introduced to him, I know how wrestling works for the most part. And I know most of the storylines, you know, it's there to, to entertain people. But even then, even me knowing that, I still be like, yo, MJ, you, you a piece of garbage. I want to punch you in your face. So, hey, MJF definitely deserves to be on my list. Number seven. Oh, man, number seven, my boy Kane. Oh, man, y'all already know I love Kane's, uh, his old uh, entrance theme music. Kane, when he took the mask off, was different. And this is the era of heel work I'm talking about. When he took his mask off and started setting people on fire, he set JR on fire. He tombstone pile drive Linda McMahon on the steel grate. It don't get no eviler than that. <laughs> he sent Bischoff to the gulags. <laughs> and let's not forget... He had Shane McMahon tied to the turnbuckle. He couldn't move nowhere. Had, a, I think, a battery and hooked up jumper cables to Shane McMahon's you-know-what. Like, that's evil. That That's certified top 10 on everybody's list, damn near. That is truly evil. Just, just... I, I can't even, he is the personification of evil when he took his mask off. Oh my God. It was, it was carnage. And I loved it. I loved it, man. So yeah, Kane definitely, number seven. Number six, Chris Jericho, man. Chris Jericho uh, definitely deserved to be on this list. The dude is great as a heel. One of my favorite heel runs from Chris Jericho was later in his years when he actually came back to WWE. Uh, I want. I don't think it was the first time. It was the second time he came back to WWE, and that's when he was. He was like, he would. He would have the. Uh, he would wear the suits or whatnot. He would wear the suits, and uh, I want to say this is like around 2007, 2008. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. His feud with HBK was one of the best feuds that year. I still remember it so vividly. How evil he was. He punched HBK's wife bro legit actually it was an accident he didn't mean to punch her like that but he punched her in the face he punched her in the face bro he sent john michaels through a a, a a a tv screen like bro evil piece of crap he was definitely a piece of crap he deserves to be on this list all right number five the rock the people's champ the heel personas he had were fantastic. If you guys remember Corporate Rock, I love Corporate Rock. He was just, he was everything that you didn't want. You know, he, he was smug. He was an asshole. He, he came off pretentious, but he was, he was charismatic. But he was still aligned with Vince McMahon. Like, you, you didn't like him. You wanted to see Stone Cold beat the crap out of him. You wanted to see somebody. You wanted to see mankind beat the crap out of him. Do you guys remember? I think, I don't know. I think he may have been with the Nation of Domination at the time. I could be wrong. But if you guys remember, there was a segment where China was being held pretty much hostage. Like, she was being held against her will. And it was a scene that they were setting up to insinuate that The Rock was about to, you know what I'm saying, yeah, you know, do some sexual deeds to her live on television. And there was going to be nothing that she, <laughs> China could do. And then he just straight up, I would never, you know what I'm saying, do that to you. You're disgusting. You're ugly. Like, he was just being despicable. That was, mm. I was like, hey, damn, bro, bro, come on, bro. Like, you ain't got to do it like that. And then, of course, Hollywood Rock was fantastic. He was so 
funny, but he was such an asshole and it worked because he played into the fact that, hey, I'm going to Hollywood. So, you know, I, I know the fans aren't liking that. The fans feel like I'm selling out. So let me play up to the fact that I'm selling out. Whatever. I'm, I'm a movie star. I love that. Hollywood rock, corporate rock, fantastic. Love those versions of his character. Um, Now we get into the nitty gritty, man. Number four, man. I have to put Edge at number four because it's Edge. Edge always worked better as a heel especially in earlier in his career um the feud he had with john cena so great so legendary the dude was at john cena's house and slapped his dad you already gotta run the fade after that it's, it's nothing to even talk about so so good the the little sex show he had live on television bro the ultimate opportunist man the uh the whole situation that he had with uh vicky guerrero and using abusing his relationship with vicky guerrero to take over smackdown like it was so many things where i was like bro god damn it edge you bastard you're so sick and devious and of course the biggest heel move of all time my man's legit took matt hardy's girl from him while matt hardy was out my man's legit took his girl and that was a real thing that they turned into a storyline it don't get no healer than that you, you he got to go on the list has to go on the list has to be up high on the list um i got for number three randy orton man randy orton definitely uh is top three for me ball-headed randy orton was a different randy orton i can just go down the list bro once he started punting people it was fair game open season for everybody bro like what he did to Kofi Kingston, bro, sent him to the gulags. He sent Sam Punk to the gulags, bro. He sent Triple H to the gulags. He had beef with Triple H. Not only was he sending Triple H to the gulags, he was chaining up Triple H to the ring, giving, giving Triple H's wife, Stephanie, a DDT onto the ring, and then kissing her in front of Triple H. And there's nothing he can do. He sent Shane to the Gulag. He sent Vince McMahon to the Gulag. His feud with uh, John Cena, where he literally picked up John Cena's dad off the front row and gave him a punt, sent him to the Gulags. It was great. It was great. Oh, my God, bro. It's, I fucking love Randy Orton, bro. A piece of garbage, evil heel that's unhinged and you don't know when he's going to snap, bro. I remember when he was feuding with John Cena. I recently saw the clip uh, not too long ago. He was feuding with John Cena. And you know champions advantage. They can get disqualified. He legit got disqualified. He didn't even care, bro. He got disqualified because he knew he was going to keep the title. I love it, bro. I love it. Randy Orton, man. One of the best heels ever in this business, man. All right, we're getting high up on the list. I got number two as Triple H, man. Triple H used to grind my gears. When I found out, storyline-wise, that Triple H was the one that took out Stone Cold Steve Austin with that vehicle, I wanted him dead. I wanted him murdered. I wanted him out of there, bro. When I found out that Triple H was the guy that attacked HBK when he was, uh, I want to say... I think he had returned and he ended up getting attacked. It was it was it was Triple H when they end up having their match at SummerSlam HBK versus um Triple H and HBK won the match victoriously, came back, he won, and then Triple H at the end of the match hits him with a sledgehammer to the back and tried to cripple the man. He's evil. He's just he's a piece of garbage. What happened when uh I want to say Randy Orton became the youngest world heavyweight champion? They're celebrating him. He turned on Randy. <laughs> this is a piece of crap. Look what he did to Goldberg. Piece of garbage. Get this man out of here. Look what he did to Daniel Bryan. Won the championship at SummerSlam only to screw him over. <laughs> the list goes on. Triple H was the one person, boy. I'm telling you, they knew how to make you mad. Oh my God, he he was so good at 
pissing you off. I loved it. Loved it. That's why Triple H is number two. Because, man, there's so many times, especially as a kid, I just wanted Triple H to just get thrown off the hell in the cell. Why? It didn't. It shouldn't have been Mankind. It should have been Triple H. All right. And number one on my list. I think a lot of you guys can already tell what who's the number one heel ever in wrestling as a whole. It's Vince McMahon. <laughs> I, 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 it's Vince McMahon, bro. It's 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 Satan himself. Like, what are we talking about? Like, what are we actually talking about? Vince McMahon is one of the greatest on-screen characters. We're talking about just his character work on screen granted it's usually just an extension of him the dude was the guy that everyone envisioned as like if you if you had a job and you had a boss that's vince mcmahon your boss was vince mcmahon and you wanted nothing but to see him get his ass beat because you knew he was using his power he was gonna you know he's a rich guy he's rich he's gonna let you know he's rich he's gonna abuse his power and that's what vince was he was the corporate america person that was at the top of the tower looking at everybody else like you're beneath me bow down to me i run shit and you just wanted to see him get his ass kicked bro you loved when stone cold would come out there and give him a stunner you loved when stone cold would destroy his property you love when someone would end up you know laying the smack it down on him you loved it bro you enjoyed it because vince mcmahon you hated him you love to hate him and that's when you knew you had something special and honestly vince mcmahon and stone cold their rivalry helped them beat wcw their rivalry took them to that next level without that rivalry i don't think it, I'm sure the show would have been good, but you needed that rivalry because people wanted to tune in every week just to see how Stone Cold was going to one-up Vince McMahon, what Vince McMahon was going to do to screw over Stone Cold, what he was going to do to screw over The Rock, what he was going to do to screw over Triple H, what he was going to do to screw over The Undertaker, what he was going to do to screw over Kane. He screwed over everybody. Nobody was safe with Vince McMahon, and I love that. That's why he is my favorite heel of all time, bro. There's no doubt about it. He is the one heel you just like, yeah, bro. Let's beat this motherfucker up. <laughs> so comment down below. Let me know what is y'all favorite. Like, give me y'all top 10 favorite heel list. I want to see how y'all top 10 lines up with mine. You can have some different people in there as well. It's your top 10 list. We can have that discussion down below. But I want to appreciate all you guys for the love and support you guys have shown on my channel, man. We're almost at 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one.